The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils at 1 Timothy chapter 4. And the Bible says that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. So it's important to know in the last days that we are not to be ignorant of the evil workings of Satan. And one of the things that you're going to notice what Satan's going to use, and God's also going to use this too, but we're going to see this all over. Zombies. Zombies. You know what's interesting about zombies? They're always associated with some kind of apocalyptic theme. End of the world theme. And guess what? It does happen that way. I'm going to show you three interesting events in the Bible. We're going to, uh, you're going to see three interesting events that, are, that associates with saved believers. And then you're going to see one event where it can be a day of terror. Literally, the night of the dead, so to speak. So we're going to see something really strange right here. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 15, though. Let's start off with the first stage right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to look at verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the what? Resurrection of the dead. So the dead, they're going to come out of their graves. And there are three events it happened. Look at verse 23. But every man in his own order. See, there's an order, a sequence here. There is no doubt. There is an order, a sequence here. Now, what is this order? Christ, the first fruits. One, obviously Jesus Christ when he resurrected, right? He raised himself from the dead. Se second one, afterward, they that are Christ. Are you part of the body of Christ? Yes. Then, here's, then you're the second one. They that are Christ at his coming. A third one, verse 24. Then cometh the what? End. Look at Matthew 24. It says tribulation and end. Look at every time it says end. It's associated with tribulation. So we see three events. One, we see Christ at his resurrection. So it's the Old Testament. The second one is for Christian, the church. The, sec the third one we see is tribulation. Now, let's look at the first one. It's obvious that it's Christ. But look, this is interesting. It's not just Jesus Christ when he resurrected. It's Old Testament saints. Look at Matthew, tw uh, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Uh, excuse me. Oh, that is just a habit. <laughs> Matthew chapter. <laughs> Some of you know what I mean. Matthew 27. Matthew 27. It's just out of a habit. Some of you know why. <laughs> Let's look at Matthew chapter 27. <laughs> if some of you just randomly say 24 when I say Matthew something, I might fall for that. <laughs> look at Matthew chapter 27. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter 27 and look at Christ's resurrection. Verse 52. And the what were open? Graves were open. And many who? Bodies of the saints which slept. See, this was before. So notice right here, this is Old Testament saints. The many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after what? His singular resurrection. See, after Jesus Christ resurrected, the Old Testament saints followed. Now, was this really zombie? I mean, yeah, I mean, look at this one right here. <laughs> and went into where? the holy city, and appeared unto who? Many. Look at that. The dead actually resurrected, walking among the living people. Now, obviously, this is not like that they were insane, you know, and then dead, rotting corpses. They look ugly and uh, they want to eat human bodies, bodies and stuff like that. But you know what's interesting is that these sci-fi, apocalyptic theme books and movies, they get their idea from something. And the Bible was way ahead before other authors and fiction writers and sci-fi writers caught up. The Bible was way ahead. So we see the first event with Old Testament saints. The second event is the church. Look at 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The second event you will see is with the Christian church. No kidding. Uh, look at this, 1 Thessalonians 4. We're going to look at verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the what? 
dead in Christ shall rise what? First. Look at that. This has to happen first. Dead people out of the graves first. Then, verse 17, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then that rapture, see? So, it seems like that there's this time, time frame where first the dead are resurrected and they're present before that rapture sounds them up. So it seems like that there are practically zombies roaming around the earth in this one. Why do we say that as well? Because not only the dead in Christ rise first at 1 Thessalonians 4. So we saw Matthew 27. I almost said 24. And then 1 Thessalonians 4, it says dead first. Not only that, 1 Corinthians 15. You can double check that. I'm not going to read it. But that verse says that Christ's resurrection, it's going to go in order, right? If that happened at the Old Testament, and that's likened to it, why won't it be the same with the Christian church? Because it's after that similar pattern. So you got 1 Corinthians 15 as another evidence. Not only that, but you're also going to see another evidence right here. Look at Philippians. Look at the book of Philippians. That book is amazing. It can amaze you every single time. Look at Philippians. We're going to look at chapter 3, chapter 3. And then your other hand to go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. We're going to look at Philippians 3 and Acts chapter 1. Study the Bible, folks. Study the Bible and you'll be surprised what it will show you. Look at Philippians chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 21. Who shall change our vile body? Obvious, that's the rapture. He's going to change our bodies. But during this rapture, it's going to be like what? That it may be fashioned like unto what? His glorious body. According to the what? Working where, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Our resurrected body is going to follow the pattern of Jesus' resurrected body, right? When Jesus had his resurrected body, wasn't he around the earth for several days? Actually, not just several, but for a long time. Look at Acts 1. I'll show you how long. Look at Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And look at verse 3. Acts chapter 1. And verse 3. To, and notice, to whom also he showed himself alive. See, this is after his resurrection. But how long did he linger? After his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them how long? Forty days. Forty days. That's why there's a theory that this can go on for 40 days in length. Night of the Dead, 40 days. There's a movie, I think, that goes 20-something days. This one's going to be 40 days. See that? So it really seems like that. See? Movies get something from somewhere. See? Movies get something from somewhere about zombies. But now we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. 15. But, so, no, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, amen? As much as I would like to leave it like that, and then everybody subscribe and say, ooh, this is interesting stuff. The thing is, this is still conjecture. Why is this conjecture? The reason why is this. We're going to look at the same passages. The reason why it's conjecture is 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4. If you're, that's why you got to be careful if you're a Bible believer. If you want to go by flesh and do what you want to teach and make it interesting, then you're going to just teach this without being very objective and letting the, and be fair with the scriptures. So you got to be fair on that one. So we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 15 at the rapture. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Notice right here, when we're changed and resurrected, it happens in what? Verse 52, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. So it seems like there is no time lapse here. It happens at a moment. Now, there is this argument that 1 Corinthians 15, it's only talking about our, the transformation of the body, not the rapture. Which makes sense if you look at 1 Thessalonians 4, right? Dead rise first. See, a transformation of the body then we which are alive and remain caught up together, the rapture, right? So for, they, they will argue that 1 Corinthians 15, 
that it's a resurrection and a change of body, not in a moment where we get raptured up to heaven. But the reason why I am hesitant, that's why I don't reject this. See, I leave it as a theory. But the reason why I can leave it as a theory, not as a hardcore doctrine, is because when you compare these two verses, look at 1 Thessalonians 4 as well. Here's the thing. When you look at context, it doesn't seem to be that way. It doesn't seem to be that way at context. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, <coughs> even so them also which sleep in Jesus, see that? You're dead in your grave, right? But when you're dead in your grave, will what? God bring with him. This resurrection that we're going to read at 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4, when it talks about resurrection, it seems like it automatically assumes the rapture is in it. So when it talks about resurrection, it's talking about the rapture. That's what it's talking about. So that's the thing. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Corinthians 15, see, it doesn't make that separation. It makes a combination, rapture and resurrection. So even though 1 Corinthians 15, it says we're going to be resurrected uh, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, the thing is this, when it says resurrected in the twinkling of an eye, it's very likely in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul's thinking rapture too. It's associated together. But let's keep reading. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Look at that. It's including living people and dead people. So this context is including living and dead. See, all inside this one resurrection that God will bring with him. Let's keep reading. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So in here we see dead rise first, and then after that those living. But the thing is, is that when the dead are resurrected by what? When God sounds his trumpet voice at verse 16. When God sounds his trumpet voice at verse 16, it's hard to say there's a time lapse after that. When he says, come up hither with his trumpet voice, that doesn't, it doesn't sound like you're going to go 40 days after that. When he says, come up hither with his trumpet voice, that means, boom, you go up. Because Revelation 4, right, the type of the church, John, he heard a voice as if it were a trumpet, and God says, come up hither, and the verse is, immediately I went up. See? So that's the reason why. So you'll notice right here that in verse 16 and 17, not only that, it shows right here the dead rise first. And then what? The living are caught up together with them in where? In the clouds. So notice when the dead is resurrected, see, they're in the clouds. And then we're caught up together with them. So even though that there's that hint of first, it may not be as much of a time gap as you think. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4, if you're very honest, see, as an honest person, uh, in, my, in my perspective, in your perspective might be different, that's fine. If you want to say 40 days zombies roaming around the earth, that's fine. I don't mind about that. Because as Bible believers, trust me, there's going to be differences on how we look at some verses, all right? There is no doubt about that. But the thing is this, is that if you're, in my conscience, when I pray by the Holy Spirit, and I look the verse exactly as it says, and not guided by flesh, wanting to teach something really interesting right here, then I got to realize that the context, when it says resurrection, it's associating with rapture there too. But not only that, I don't like it when post-tribbers use 1 Corinthians 15 to say it's only talking about a resurrection of body, not the rapture. See, so I don't like that either. But the point is this, it doesn't matter what post-tribbers say or, or what the interesting theory says, it's an honest look. And when you look at that, it really shows that. But the reason why I don't debunk this is because still, again, you see these other verses, right? So you can't deny these other verses too. So that's why it's be I leave that as an interesting theory. Now, if you think that was interesting enough, I'm going to show you something even more interesting than that. All right? We're going to look at the tribulation, and then we're going to come to here. This is something really freaky. But let's go to the tribulation. Remember, then cometh the end, right? The tribulation. Look at Revelation 11. Revelation chapter 11. There is absolutely no doubt that when 
God resurrects these tribulation saints that the people will see them. All the people will see them. They're going to see them, so it is literally zombies present with them. It's not like really quick, boom, you're gone like that. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Notice right here at verse... Nine, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see, see everyone around the world is going to see, their what? Dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. So they're all going to see those dead bodies and they're going to see those dead bodies come up. And when you die at the tribulation, they chop off your head, right? Look at this, man. This is literally like a movie. Some headless guy coming up from the dead. What in the world? And then the guy just attaches his head right on his body like that. I mean, like, what in the world? Is that going to happen? Yeah, look at verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet. Now look at this. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. Look at that. And then after that. See, after that, they're present like zombies. Verse 12. They heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So notice right there, then after that, then they get raptured up. So we see a third rapture right here. But this, there is no doubt there is that time lapse. I don't know how long, but there is that time lapse. They will see those people coming up from the dead. And, if, and when their heads are chopped off, they're going to attach. That head is going to attach to their body like that. And everyone's, the verses and great fear fell upon them all. You know why? Because they watched too many dumb movies mm -hmm. like The Walking Dead and horror movies. They watched all that so much and then they're going to freak out that this is actually real. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that these are saints. These are saints. All, zombies are actually going to be the good guys, you notice. Mm -hmm. There is one group of bad guys. We're going to look at Revelation now 6. Here's the most interesting thing. This is the most interesting thing. Look at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Ooh, la di da di da What in the world? You know that movie about those zombies coming out and killing a bunch of people? It's very, very possible. Are you kidding, Pastor? No, we're going to look at Revelation 6. Look at this now. This is crazy. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. Now look what happens when this fourth seal is opened up at Revelation. Okay? It's the night of the living dead terror. Look at this. And his name that sat on him was death and what? Notice, hell follow death. And power was given unto them over... Notice that death and hell kill all of what? The fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Look at that. They kill a quarter, nearly like a quarter of the people around the world because hell follows death. You got to realize this. Hell is going to be loosed and opened up again. If hell literally follows death, you know who's literally turned into hell? Look at Psalms. Psalms 9. Psalms 9. What new doctrine is this, said the Pharisees. <laughs> Look at Psalms 9. It's not new. It's something scripture. Psalms chapter 9, verse 17. If you got lost loved ones and family members deceased, it's really sad when they die in their sins and they burn in hell. That's why, look at this. Psalms chapter 9. And notice what the Word of God says about the wicked at verse 17. The wicked shall be what? Turned into hell. Yeah, you, you turn into hell. And if that's a law, if there's a bunch of dead people who died in their sins and they're burning in hell, the Bible says they turn into hell. And guess what? Hell, if you're turned into hell, you, the, the lost person who died, is going to come up and guess what? They kill a quarter of the earth like that. Crazy. But here's an, if you think that's not even interesting enough, we're going to look at two chapters and we're going to close. Look at Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Revelation 9. Second passage. Go to Mark 9. Mark 9. 
Mark 9 and Revelation 9. This is going to be really, really interesting. We get Mark 9 and Revelation 9. When hell is opened up to persecute the earth, you know what happens? These weird bug-like creatures come out. But they are like half human and half bug. It's so weird. And guess what? They persecute the inhabitants of the earth. Revelation 9. And verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the where? Bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. Look at that. Hell is opened up. But look what comes out of hell. And there came out of the smoke, what? Locusts upon the earth. Look at this. Half human and half bug. Look at this. Verse 7, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the what? Faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of what? Women. And by the way, this verse should prove there's a difference of hair in the Bible with a man and a woman. All right? Don't act like some hippie and then use that excuse. That, oh, I can have long hair if you're a guy. Don't do that. All right? There's a distinguishing God sees at verse 7 and 8. That's a small sermon. Let's keep reading. So we see right here that uh, verse 10, they had tails like unto what? Scorpions. So look at this. Half bug, half human. You know what happens to a lost sinner when they go to hell? Mark 9. Jump to Mark 9. In fact, let me give you a big hint. It's repeated three times for some of you who know the Bible. And you got the answer. Some of you already know what that is. Mark 9, 44. This is hell, right? Where there what? Worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Will that book blow up your mind or what? <laughs> because doesn't it make sense that if people who go to heaven will transform, will transform to like Jesus Christ, don't you think the lost people will with their daddy, the devil? And Satan is known as Beelzebub, Prince of the Flies, Lord of the Flies. Wow, that book will blow up your mind all the time. But here's another thing. So let's assume, let's assume. Now, you notice I keep saying assume. You know why? And might, because this is still conjecture, all right? So this is conjecture. Two conjectures are this one for the church age rapture. The second conjecture is this one about lost people with the fourth seal of revelation. So don't go around and say, Pastor Kim teaches this kind of weird stuff. Don't do that. And don't teach like I should kill my cat and throw it away. Don't do that, please. <laughs> now let's look at right here at Revelation 9. Go back to Revelation 9. Assuming that this turns out to be true, that hell opens up, and then the inhabitants of the, here are these dead who come up now, and then these lost people come out half what? Monster, half human. And this is really close to what you watch in movies now. Here they are, ugh, half monster, half human, like a bug and like a human. And guess what? When they infect one person, that person cannot die too. That person is going to be like them, seeking death and finding none. You don't believe me? Look at Revelation 9. Look at Revelation 9. <coughs> these bug-like creatures, what did they do? What they did was, at verse 5, these bug-like creatures from hell, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. So they're infected now by this quote-unquote zombies. And when they're infected by them, look at this, verse 6. They become a zombie too. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not what? Find it. And shall desire to die and death shall what? Oh my goodness. You get bitten by one of these so-called zombies. You can't say, oh, please blow out my brain and put me out so I don't become one of them. No, you, that's not what's going to happen. When you get infected by them, you can try to blow your brains out. You can try to die. You're not going to die. If I were you, I'd get saved in Jesus Christ right now. Bless God. And I want 
if, if I'm going to be a zombie, I, I prefer this one when it happens <laughs> rather than this terror. So the thing is this, is that now we've seen some interesting verses about what the Bible said about zombies. Uh, truth is stranger than fiction sometimes. 